I am going to be making a pair of culottes today and I love the style. However, I am having a hard time finding a pair that fits my body. So I'm going to be adding a lace elastic to the back. I'm going to be adding a lining to the inside. And then, like I said, I'm going to be altering the waist um, just to fit my body. And so I will provide all those resources. So if any of those things are something you're interested in, you can also alter the patterns to fit your body. Hey everyone, this video is going to be part of a series where I will be making my own clothing using natural fibers to the best of my ability. If this is something you're interested in, please subscribe because I have a feeling this video series is gonna last quite a while. I've provided a link to this pattern in the video description and it's originally in French and so the English translation of culotte is actually panties and so yes, it is called panties skirt. A word of caution for anybody in the United States using this pattern, it is designed to be printed with A4 paper and not the typical US letters, so you'll have to use the PDF to print it out. Once I got that sorted out, I could actually start working on the pattern, and the first step was to mark all my seam lines. And this is important to know where the pattern actually will be on your body when you're measuring your crotch hook and depth measurements. I used quite a few resources when I was trying to figure out the best way to alter the crotch and torso area. But the person who had the most thorough explanation is Michelle Wynn and I've linked to her blog below along with all the other resources I used in the description. I'm now on to phase two of my alterations, which is adding in the elastic waistband to the back of the pants. So to do this, I'm going to have to remove the darts on the back. I'm going to have to open up the pants along the grain line and I'm adding three inches. Um, and I think that's, oh, the one last thing I have to do is I have to make sure the waistband is also scaled up to match the increased width of the back pants. And that's it. Now that I have a first pass of the pattern alterations done, I'm making a muslin or tulle to test the fit before I actually cut into my expensive wool fabric. I literally don't understand.
You can see here that I'm already experiencing an issue. My waistband and the top of the pants didn't match up at all, so I had to fold over the fabric quite a few inches just to get it to fit in the waistband. I've spent the last few days altering my muslin and I actually had to do quite a bit to make this look somewhat decent sitting down. Um, initially when I would sit down it would just be like a huge puff in my abdomen area and so I ended up taking in a lot um, in the front and the side seams and because of that I changed the inverted box pleat to a dart because there's just not enough material for the inverted box pleat to like hang like it's supposed to and you can see it's it's all bunched up here and here it's like a lot smoother i mean it's still a little bunched up because i couldn't get my seam to be perfectly smooth as i wanted to when i was sewing Before I rip this muslin apart to make it into my pattern, I wanted to go through and show you um, sort of the order of operations I went through to make my alterations. The first thing I did was I shortened the crotch length, basically just this flap here, um, because for some reason this pattern is like super long and I don't know if like the crotch is supposed to be like just floating like MC Hammer Pants or something, but I wasn't into it, so I shortened it. Um, the second thing I did was I went, and this like crotch line, I don't even know what it's called, but it basically hung out like really far. And as you can see, I had done this probably five or six times actually, and I just had to rip out some of my threads. And so when you're looking at this, the blue, that is my original seam line. The red thread is where I was supposed to be sewing over my original seam line. And then the bright green is my alteration. So I know when I rip this part that anything that's green before I rip it apart, I'm gonna mark it with Taylor's chalk so that I know where it was. So anyways, once I finished this, this honestly took me like a full day to do. Um, I think I did the leg, the side seams, I did like a rough pass to get it somewhat tighter. I took in the back um, up near the elastic a little bit. Uh, it was just like really puffy there, but I obviously need to still get it over my butt, so I couldn't take it in too much. The last thing that I didn't do on the muslin is I didn't add any extra length to the bottom. And I just marked it and now know when I make my pattern that I need to add three inches. And that's because I took away so much of the length of this like crotch length area. And that's it. I have now outlined my alterations. So this is the front piece and I'm honestly like not sure about this shape I drew. Um, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, just leave them in the comments. I'm just gonna go with it. And then I have a little bit of material taken out of the back and you can see my line here. It's a little insane how much I ended up taking out, but remember I added three inches in 
in like a V shape, so three inches added to the top to account for the elastic in the waistband. I think there is so much extra space in the pattern to begin with, I didn't need to do that for the pant leg, but for the waistband, I did need to do that um, because the waistband was actually perfect with three inches added on each side, so six inches total so that it has a nice little scrunchy effect. Now I'm going to trace this onto like transfer paper because I need to add in the seam allowances because remember I pin this to my body and these lines are actually where the seams are going to be. Um, and so I need to draw in the seam allowances so when I cut it, I do not cut these pieces far too small. Here you can see the difference between the initial alterations and then my second pass outlined in red. I've been working on these pants for so long that there was an actual change in seasons before I completed them. I really like this method of sewing the crotch seam. In order to do it, you basically take one leg and keep it right side, and then you flip the other leg inside out, and then you put them together so the right sides are facing. I found this to be a really easy way to match up the seams and have a really smooth sewing line. I thought the waistband assembly directions were a little minimal in this pattern, and so I would recommend you already know how to assemble a waistband if you're going to use this pattern. I am so happy with how these turned out. I learned a ton, including that making a muslin is totally worth it. Made sewing with expensive fabric um, less scary. Next time I would have larger seam allowances so I could do French seams. And I would also cut out each pattern piece individually just to make sure the plaid actually matches up next time. Next up, I'm gonna be making a top to go with these culottes using the black and white fabric. <laughs> 